Fellas, so you want to know what you need to do to run some E85 on your LS or your Vortec? Let's get into it, man. Don't mind the mess here. You guys know we're still working on getting this thing turboed. As you can see, we got parts, bits and pieces all over, but uh, you guys know we're going to get it done, man. We're still waiting on those turbo manifolds, so those should be coming in the next few days. So until then, let's, uh, let's get into this video, man. We'll come around to this side, and like I said, we'll go ahead and show you guys how to run E85, a lot of people have been asking me how to do it. So we'll show you how to do it without the sensor. So you can do it with the sensor or without the sensor. And then obviously some people with their LSs or their Vortex, some already have flex fuel, so you don't even need the sensor. So just really depends on your application. So me and instructor Bud, we'll go ahead, go. We'll go ahead and uh, break down exactly what you gotta do, man. You guys see the truck though, like I said, pretty much got everything I need for the turbo install, just waiting on those turbo manifolds. And then, uh, yeah man, everything else is pretty much complete. It's all about cutting the pipes, making a crossover, making the, uh, the intercooler piping, so you guys know the deal, man. That's what all this crap is. Got our argon tank, got our fuel system, everything that you pretty much need, so really just waiting on that. And then of course I still gotta get little pieces like the fuel injectors, uh, I think like one sensor or something like, like some other different sensor, but uh, pretty much like I said, have it all. Truck is pretty much complete. Once we finish this, man, it's gonna be off to the tuner, man, what everybody's been waiting for. Yeah, man, for those who've been following the build since the jump, you guys know it's come a long way, man. But there you have it. Let me, uh, I've never really introduced my boy. Everybody thinks he's a mechanic or the mystery, <laughs> the mystery man behind the camera. The stig of the mechanic. Man. But yeah, this is actually my brother. So everybody yeah. thinks he's my neighbor, my homie, my friend. That's my brother. You so we'd be working on this together, getting it done. All the time, you know, he's just behind the scenes. That's it. Behind the scenes, yeah. getting it done. So everybody be saying, uh, you know, he's doing all the work. You know, we work. <laughs> I, I help where I can, uh, but somebody's got to do the filming, right, bud? Yeah, someone's got to do the filming and the editing, you know, so. There you have it. Otherwise, the only other option would be to have the camera on a tripod, and that just would not be the same type of content for you guys, man. So, there you have it, man, but let's go ahead, break down what the uh, E85 setup is for you guys. So, first and foremost, we'll go ahead and explain it in two ways. We'll do uh, how to set it up without the sensor, without a flex sensor, and then how to set up with a flex sensor. So. We'll go ahead and start back here. And like I said, every application is gonna be different. So if you have a truck like this, I don't think it's very rare for these to come with flex fuel. So um, more than likely, you're gonna to have to do exactly what I did. If you have like a Camaro, Corvette or something, like I said, everything's gonna be pretty much similar, but different as in like the fuel filters, the lines and stuff like that. But if you have a truck like mine, this is your go-to video. So we can start with the fuel pump. Um, That's gonna be down right there. Yeah, it's gonna be, you gotta either remove your bed or lift up your bed like some people do and just hold it up with like a piece of wood or a jack, something like that. So like he said, I'll go ahead and throw in a few clips. Uh, uh, first thing is gonna be that fuel pump that you're gonna need. I went with, as you can see right here, just depends on how much power you wanna make. Uh, the Quantum one, uh, that one right here, that one was good good e85 pump no complaints no problems no issues with it and then what we have now is now we got a walbro 450 which i guess they're pretty good for pretty good horsepower but once you start going up there with e85 you know that's more uh, fuel uh, usage so we're going to be throwing in a second pump running two dual 450s to hold up to that power it's going to be about 700 750 Really, you just need a pump that could run E85, depending on what horsepower you're going for, and you should be good. Like I said, that's the pump that's gonna be right around in this area. Then, you're gonna come down to your fuel filter. All right, as you can see right here, we got a aftermarket uh, fuel filter, and you wanna upgrade that because your original um, fuel filters are paper cartridges, and with E85, they do deteriorate that paper, so you want to upgrade to these aftermarket ones. So with these aftermarket ones, they have they have stainless steel um, cartridges, which hold up a lot better to E85, and definitely a needed upgrade if you're going to be doing this. And then that's going to bring us on over to the engine bay. So basically, back there, all you need is the fuel pump, 
and then a fuel filter. Um, we didn't change any of those lines. Not exactly plug and play. Uh, you still got to do like A and fittings and stuff like that. Um, I do have videos of installing those. If you guys go to my old videos, you can find them. But other than that, that brings us up here. And then, uh, so pretty much I'm running it on a TBSS manifold, but you can still do this with the, the regular stock intake, uh, sheet metal, whatever intake you're using. So coming into the engine bay, the biggest thing uh, that you're gonna need is PTFE line, which if we come over here, I can show you because I'm upgrading to AN8. The one I have currently is AN6. So it's gonna be this line with the, uh, you can see it has a plastic on the inside. So E85 will not eat that away. Um, this is what you're gonna need right here. I used about, I believe it's 10 feet, 15 feet maybe. Um, don't really remember, but you could do 10 to 20 feet, you'll be fine. If you do 20 feet, you will be fine. 10 feet, I don't remember if I used that one, but more or less, you get the idea. All right, as you can see right here, we got our feed for the fuel coming into our regulator. I know we also got our E85 sensor right here. We'll get into that in a bit, but we got our feed coming into the regulator right here. And then we got the feed coming out on this side, going to our rails. Now we got this feed coming out of the regulator and which goes around the back of the intake and it feeds over here and it feeds into the front right here of our rail with a 180. And then with this rail, it comes out, does another loop around here on the back side, which you can see the hose, which feeds our other rail on this side. So that's gonna go into this rail, to the back right there, and to that line up there, makes a loop all the way around. Mm -hmm. And that's typically gonna be plugged into the fuel rail back there. We don't have it plugged in right now, but right back to the fuel rail right there. So that's just gonna go right there. So then that comes to the fuel rail. And, and to the, the front, we have it capped. To the front which has a cap. And so that is pretty much, it's kind of like a returnless fuel system, even though you still have on the fuel regulator, this is your return. So you'll just connect this part to your return, your factory return right there. With, uh, if you get one of the quick disconnect fittings to an A in line, you'll be able to sort that out right there. And then there's other ways you could do it. You could do a Y into your fuel rails, have that feed the, the rails. And then you could also, there's just quite a bit of ways to do it. So. Yeah, but that's just the way we chose yeah, to do it. Yeah, that's the way we chose it. Um, to be honest, this way of doing it was pretty easy. We, didn't, we haven't had any issues with it, so it worked out yeah, pretty yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other ways you could get a little bit better flow and fuel with it, but it really depends on your preference and how you want to do it. And then as far as running it without the uh, flex fuel sensor, that's really pretty much it. The other thing you're going to need is E85 uh, injectors because the stock ones won't do it. But other than that, that's pretty much it as far as running E85. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple process. You know? It's real simple. Yeah. Like I said, if you're not doing the flex fuel sensor, I mean, even with that, it's still pretty simple. But if you only plan on running pure E85, no regular gas, no 91, none of that, that's the way to do it. So now let's say you do want to run a flex fuel sensor, it's going to be the exact same thing. Just now you're adding your sensor and your wiring, as you can see there. So this is the sensor here, but since in my case we are running it, um, it's funny because I'm not even on a 91 tune or regular gas tune right now. So I might not even end up using it, but I have it there just in case I want to. So plugs in there. Now wiring, let's go ahead and get into it. So now when you get your sensor, um, you're going to have to also buy your harness that they come separately. Maybe they do sell some kits that come together, but you get your harness and sensor separate. At least I did. My sensor is the AC Delco. Uh, I'll have the link in the description if you guys want to check that out. Also the harness. But once you get to the wiring of the harness, what do you got to do, bud? So for the wiring, the harness, you got three wires. You got your, um, your constant battery power, you got your ground, and then you got the wire that goes into your computer or ECU which should be the pin 56 on the blue connector. And so for our power, we just got it a little Mickey Mouse, but we got it coming up here. I kind of have it like uh, jumped into one of the fuses for the fuse box. But just to be sure, just to check if uh, we don't remember if it's constant power or switch power. So we'll just go ahead, check real quick. Probe the back of this uh, fuse. See if we get any power, which we don't. So this is most likely is going to be a switched power for your power for your ED5 sensor. So yeah, you don't really want to have that constantly on all the time. Switched power. So there you have it. That's the way we have it set up. I haven't decided yet when I go back to retune this once it's boosted, um, if I want to keep it all E85 or run both. 
kind of just want to keep E85 because it's healthier for the engine, but we'll see when the time comes. And then our ground, we have it just grounded right here on the side of the alternator bracket. Just a note on my, mine is the older style computer, which have red and blue connectors. I think on the newer style, they're green and blue. So I think the blue side should still be the same though. Pop off your, I think it's a little seven millimeter bolt. Take this gray cap off and then there'll be a, uh, another little blue cap on there that you take off so you can throw your pin in there for the ECU. Plug it in. Plug it in and after that, Got to head over to your tuner. That way he could either switch over the OS for a car that actually ran flex fuel so you can run it on this and have the capability of running E85 and 91. But pretty much, once again, just real quick, from your harness, it's gonna be pretty much just power and ground, like we showed earlier. Power in here, ground there, and uh, then your pin to blue 56, and then that's pretty much it. Head over to your tuner and get her tuned up, fellas. Or if you know how, if you got, um, was the HP tuners and know how to do it, go for it. All right guys, but there you have it, man. Real quick breakdown on the E85 system that I'm currently running with. Uh, so what I was running with the Quantum fuel pump, that pump's good for about like 450 horsepower to the wheels. With the Walbro now, um, with this setup, with the Walbro pump that I have now, um, those tend to max out at about 710, 717. Um, if you guys seen Mikey Mikes, I think that's his name, the other YouTuber, he maxed out one Wabro 450 fuel pump and uh, in multiple occasions he was only able to do like 710 horsepower. So that's why I'm going with dual fuel pumps uh, just to make sure that I have that fuel that I need. And even in future cases, you know, when I do end up building the motor, the block, and I want to make even more power, I'm already good to go. If you guys have any other questions, comments about the truck, I mean, for the most part, you guys know what's coming next for it. Um, more than likely, like I said, probably going to do the dual fuel pump setup um, next video because I will be getting that soon from her on speed. So until then, I should have those turbo manifolds come in. Then we can finally start getting all this shit in there. You guys know the deal. But like I said, if you guys have any other comments, questions, let me know in the comment section, man. And the update on the vet, nothing too crazy on the vet. You guys know this is my daily, man. Just a simple little clean daily. I haven't done too much to it. But like I said, as soon as we start getting the truck done for the most part, um, gonna start doing things to this clutch cam something simple probably gonna keep it na i do have a pro charger maybe we could throw that in we'll see man all right guys but you see it man you see the vet you see the truck it's gonna wrap it up like i said this is uh just a simple video this week like i said to get those rest of those parts so appreciate y'all for watching man like comment and subscribe to your boy we'll see you on the next one man